Jack Dapper Blues Heritage Preservation Foundation is a tax-exempt 501c3 nonprofit private foundation. Your donations, sponsoring, and funding allows us to create content that raises awareness of African American traditional music, African American folklore, and the Black experience. Check the link in the description box to donate. If you wish to sponsor podcasts, documentary series, or underwrite ads in our upcoming newspaper, The African American Folklorist, launching February 5th, 2020, contact the email address in the description box. Life, uh, the experience, the traditions, I learned it from my, my study and in, 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 uh, trying to live according to the Most High in the Bible, uh, not to praise and worship our traditions, but to celebrate it and live it and, and praise the tradition giver. Uh, I'm inspired by that, I'm inspired by the Bible a lot. Drop to my knees, no talk to me, why black folk die, yeah. music how I, I don't think initially it started out as a music to sell so I think the best way to put it um, Leroy Jones Mir Baraka has it in his book uh, which I think is like the Bible of, of the lineage of black music if you trace our history and heritage back to Af we'll call it Africa at this point. <laughs> we trace it back to Africa. And, and you see what happened before the, the colonization and before um, the captivity and prisons of war. What my ancestors did was, singing was, was spiritual. When they worshiped, um, when they worshiped the Most High God, they sang. When they worked, they sang. When they celebrated, they sang. And it, that inspires me because it, it, it lets me understand that this, not only this is part of my story and part of my DNA, but it is a spiritual um, existence and a spiritual expression, right? It revesses really what the spirit is and we express through the spirit, right? This is as spiritual as it gets. It's the fact that not only is blues music black history, but like everything else in American culture, there is a, a, a racist and a, a oppressive uh, system involved in it. That doesn't mean, you know, musicians have problems with other musicians. That just, that's a fact. The, the, the music was, was birthed on this land out of oppression, out of segregation, out of Jim Crow. It was it was the result of reconstruction and the emancipation. Personally for me, I think it's extremely important, first and foremost, for African Americans to support those who come out and play any music for that matter, live. Let's get that straight. But with that being said, African American folks by all means, you need to find out where your local black blues musician is performing and go out there and support that brother or sister. Hey. Take 
friends, we put together a program where we not only play, but we give, you know, historical content, you know, we, we have organic conversations with the audience, and we try to bridge gaps, right? It's a learning environment, it, 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 edifying experience, but it's also a family experience, you know, and if there's no children there, you can get a little bit more launchy and, and, and you know, hit home some of the other sides of the music and the lifestyle and, and, and the, the culture and tradition that's part of it. Because some people just don't know. You know, hip hop is the great, great, maybe great, great, great grandchild of the blue, right? You have uh, Mississippi John Hurt, you have uh, uh, um, 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 Sun House, you have Booker White. They all did a song about uh, 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 prison, right? Parchment Farm. Then you have Ani Mosey, who's hip hop, reggae. You have uh, Cool G Rap, and who, who's straight up original gangster hip hop, and, and, and different cats like this, Karis One, who's done songs about prison and going to prison and the prison industrial system, right? This, this is a lineage of Grio here. I remember Redman put out an album called Muddy Waters. I don't even think anybody knew who he was talking about or who it was inspired by, who Muddy Waters is. Soul, funk, rock and roll, but it all stemmed from the blues because they all came from the same place, the black church. So these are the things that when I perform or when I host one of my, my, my shows or document anything that has to do with our heritage, that's what I want people to to do. Receive that information and want to inquire more and go back and look and find poems by Langston Hughes and Sterling Brown about the blues and, and, and juke joints and juke houses and rent parties in Harlem. A lot of folk have a problem, you know, with other people controlling a narrative. You know, so we have a situation here where some of us are taking control of our narrative, right? And not telling it from any other perspective, but those who are from and live the tradition to this day. What's important for me that people receive when I'm hollering the blues is I want them to feel 
it and feel me and feel what's going on. I want, you know, I want them to really have an authentic blues experience. You gotta understand, I ain't never picked you no know, cotton. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. I'm safely first generation New York out of my family. You know, my mama was born in Chicago, my dad in New Orleans. My daddy's parents, Louisiana, and my mother, my mother's parents, Mississippi. But I'm first generation New York, Brooklyn, New York. And I grew up during the hip hop era, right? So I do know what it feels like to, to go to school post-civil rights where the same teachers that were teaching during the civil rights movement and did not want people like myself in their classes were still teaching. So I had my experiences with racism and prejudice and, 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 and things of this nature. The irony of it is when you, you go back and listen to the songs, like from people like Petey Wheatstro, you might listen to it, like my wife said, it was like my grandma used to sing like that around the house. You never knew what the hell she was doing or talking about or singing. And then you have a connection to your people. And if God willing, this somebody from that age range is still alive, you can ask them questions. So you can pass it down to your children, because that's what it's about. It's worth your mighty will, worth myself and baby will. Of it, this was this was it, it empowered you know people of, of color, uh, black and brown people. This empowered us, and this this brought us out of minstrelsy. So I believe that this is an important tradition to maintain, you know, not only for the legacy of it, but also for the future, so that we don't find ourselves doing the same things that we were doing back then. You know, going 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 back to something that might be comfortable. You know, which is why I don't really. I don't really jive with that shucking and jive and any of that stuff, you know? Yes. towards why well, I should say I first got interested in this through uh, listening to electric blues or Chicago blues, more modern blues. And I think, you know, a lot of people come into it that way. It's, uh, it's clear, you know, you can't necessarily find someone that's not going to love Muddy Waters or, or Howlin' Wolf or anything like that. But then, like, as I found myself diving deeper to see, you know, where the influences came from, or even if you came up through, like, for example, listening to, like, you know, one of the English bands or whatever, you know, uh, you dig just a little bit deep, you just scratch the surface and you catch, you catch on the muddy waters, let's say, and then you trace the lineage back to Sun House, you know, and then you trace the lineage, you know, all the way back, you know, Rube Lacey, or dig, like uh, slavery and indentured servitude, uh, the, the, the cotton economy down south and just the way that, uh, uh, what's that beautiful book, uh, Nothing But a Man, right? Uh, how how there, were, there were certain things that, that, uh, that you would do on your very uh, on, on your time off to kind of make uh, make everything else all right and, and and feel better about yourselves and and, and from an outsider perspective I might just look like y'all entertaining each other. Truth of the matter is is it's a it's a very reciprocal uh, arrangement. Whether you you're the one playing the music, or you're the one dancing the music, you're the one serving the drinks, you're the one, you know, greeting the people. It's a very reciprocal relationship because everybody is finding that level to make it okay. The blues that I play, um, you know, 
God don't like ugly, and I can't lie. I grew up uptown, you know. I didn't grow up in no country, nothing like that. Um, I, I am, you know, a city, a, a city born and bred person, you know, to the bone. Uh, my inspiration does come from country blues, but uh, and I like to think that I do it justice in terms of a style. I don't know. There's some songs that I play that are definitely Delta blues. You know, as just like you, Brother Jack, I mean, I love Sunhouse, you know, that's my man. And I think, you know, again, he's at the root of a lot of this, you know. Um, there's people that either they fall in the Charlie Patton camp or the Sunhouse camp. And, you know, I, I don't mind either of those camps. My allegiance was always to, you know, the way Sunhouse approached this. And, and, uh, and there's something very beautiful about the struggle of a man trying to stay on the, uh, on the narrow path, you know. Uh, you see him dip into, into secular, you see him dip into more gospel type music, you see him jump back and forth. Um, but that's the beauty of it, and also the beauty of it is in the fact that like, uh, in Jesus Christ I have a friend and we're forgiven, right? So, it's not to say that it's okay, but it's understood, and, 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 and what a friend we have in Jesus. The blues that I play, I just think it's plain old blues, you know, and, and uh, my good friend Lally, she told me, whatever you do, uh, do it with a feeling, you know, and if you're not going to do it with a feeling, may as well not do it at all. I've got a story to tell. There's this John Fahey record that I picked up some years ago. And it's taken me a while to kind of dissect it and enjoy it, right? It's not necessarily my speed, I really dig it. But there was something that he said on the flip of the record, on the back side of the album cover, it says something like, uh, uh, Jesus Christ is not cute, it's not a toy, and it's not meant to be sweetened up and and, and shined up and made all pretty. There's something very raw about the gospel and there, there, there's, there's a whole lot of, you know, uh, beauty and power to, 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 to partake in if you open yourself up. Me, when I, when I play these blues, I hope that, uh, that I'm able to take this simple guitar, the simple amplified, you know, guitar amplified in a very old way, just a comb, you know, I'm hoping that I'm able to take this and uh, and, and and show you that that uh, in the very in, in the very basic structure of what what the blues is that I play. You know, I'm not a tricky guitar player or anything like that. I don't throw my guitar up in the air and dance around or anything. 
But this very simple structure, within that structure, I was able to express myself, show you something that's deep in my heart, that I believe in, and most importantly in this day and age, let the children know that, that they, can, uh, they can do it themselves. And there's beauty in the error, and there's beauty in the mistake, and there's beauty in the simplicity, the, the, the expression of thought, the expression of sincerity, you know? When I play, I just, I, just, I just hope that people pick up on the sincerity of it. You know, that, that cat's sincere, he's coming from the heart. Um, uh, you know, I'll, I'll sing a song about graffiti, I'll sing a song about the trains, I'll sing a song about my experiences, and I'm not talking about hopping freight trains, I'm talking about the, you know, the two train, I'm talking about the one train. I'm talking about 137th Street, you know, I'm talking about 140, 181st, Dykeman, I'm talking about Uptown, you know, I'm talking about Downtown, you know. Um, it's sincere. I'm not going to tell a story that, that I don't relate to. I just hope people pick up on that. And again, I stress this, Brother Jack, most importantly, that the children realize that they can, they can make something. You know, you're sitting home with the most basic tools, whether it's a pencil and a piece of paper, you can make something of that, you know? You can make something of that, you know, uh, the most basic, most simple tools. We are empowered and we are beautiful. And we have creation within us. The blues is not dead, you know? Uh, second of all, you're not gonna keep the blues alive by, by just uh, looking at old pictures and, and showing old pictures and posting old pictures of cool cats and things like that, you know? Uh, uh, you're going to keep the blues alive by participating in it, you know, and uh, in general, get in where you fit in, you know, there's a, uh, you know, if, if, if you have love for this, uh, you will find your place in this. If your love is uh, like a glossy magazine, eventually it'll come to the end of that magazine and there won't be no more, nothing else for you to do in it, <laughs> you know, so uh, there's people out there, you know, and pardon me, Jack, you know, I, I, I'm not going to even focus on the negative. What, what, what do I think the whole, you know, the, the purpose of this is really just to show that it is alive and it is as relevant today as it was back in the 20s, 30s, go on and on and on, 60s, 70s, 80s. Uh, it is uh, a, a tool that... Uh, it doesn't need to be co-opted and doesn't need to be owned. It's not just you up and it owns you. It needs to be respected, taken care of and nurtured and, and, and most importantly brought across with love. Because what I sing about is as relevant today as it was back when, you know, when, when anyone first sang with us, you know? traditional music because it's part of our heritage, it's part of our culture. It, it's beautiful music, it's worth preserving. Yes, especially to oh, carry on. Nice. inspiration for 
playing this style of music was the music of Mississippi John Hurt, which I came across at about the age of, I want to say, 18. And um, once I heard recordings of him, I just knew I had to learn how to play something like that. But uh, since that time, since hearing him, uh, I've been inspired by so many other musicians, both past and present. Um, from the past, I would say people like Elizabeth Cotton, Etta Baker, Memphis Minnie, um, to an extent a little bit of Reverend Gary Davis, and there are just dozens and dozens of people that have uh, inspired and helped me along my path since that time, uh, most notably probably uh, John Cephas. He was a great blues musician from Washington, D.C. He played in the same style that I've been studying. And, uh, he, he was a, a great influence on me. I woke up With that candy on my mind Woke up this morning got candy on my mind Woke up this morning candy on my mind Crying pop You know that can't eat killing me. Can't eat Papa. Sure Lord killing me. Can he don't kill me? Maybe I never die. My greatest <laughs> inspiration was actually listening to Valerie when I first heard her play. I learned from a few uh, great musicians like Phil Wiggins, who's a great harmonica player, uh, Jay Summerauer, who played harmonica and also washboard, and also Newman Taylor Baker, who's a great drummer and percussionist and a wonderful washboard player. I do have deep southern roots. Uh, my mother's family was from Virginia. Father's family came out of Georgia. And uh, that pretty much gives you the northern and southern boundaries of the Piedmont region. And uh, growing up, I was aware of blues music and, and drawn to it. I'm from uh, Trinidad and Tobago originally, home of the steel drum and also calypso music. And um, I have no connection to the Piedmont region, but I love the music and also enjoy listening to uh, Delta Blues music. I disagree that country blues music is far gone. It might not be the most popular genre of music. It's definitely a niche genre. And it doesn't have the same kind of following that uh, rock and roll or, or pop music has. But uh, it has its place. And it's not far gone. I would love to see more African Americans participating in the preservation of this music. You could be coming out to support the music as a listener, or you could be someone that uh, is really passionate about it and you study it very deeply so that you can write about it or teach people about it. You can support the preservation of the music by uh, learning how to play it and performing it so that other people can see you and be inspired themselves. Um, I do hope that when people watch Ben and I perform, that it inspires them in some way to, to, to join in. But with that said, I think uh, country blues music 
uh, is the foundation for all the music that's, you know, American music. When we have a performance, um, primarily we hope that people feel entertained. And we also hope that they leave our performances having learned a thing or two. Because the music is truly for everybody. Um, but I'm saddened by the lack of African Americans that I see participating. And also as, as um, people in the audience, we rarely see uh, many African Americans, especially in the uh, Northeast. That's, that's Usually fair. in the South, we have a much larger audience of African American people, but that's true. Uh, in the Northeast, this music and the heritage that it you know, has, because originally when I came here, when I was eight years old, the only type of um, blues music that I knew of was the B.B. King, the um, electric blues. Until I met Valerie, that's when I found out about uh, the root of the music, which is country blues, and I thought it was beautiful, especially coming from folks who, who had gone through so much in the South for hundred, hundreds of years, uh, putting out such tranquil and beautiful music, I thought it was a sharp contrast. Acoustic music seems to always take a backstage to the electric form of blues. You know, pick any festival or event that has multiple stages and you'll find the acoustic stage snugged away in a corner somewhere. Or um, even in a different building. Or even times. in a different building. <laughs> yes. Um, that happened uh, yeah, to us. In Ireland. Acoustic musicians tend to get to open for other acts. Um, we get the, uh, the less prominent time slots in um, festivals. And, and but also in, in uh, folk specific uh, festivals. Yeah, now that's a good that's point. A if you go to a folk festival, you'll find that acoustic blues musicians get more equal footing. You'll be on the main stage. The, the folk community really embraces blues music, and blues music is a type of folk music.